Hi everyone, this is Alex Tardy, meteorologist at National Weather Service office out of San Diego. We want to talk to you about the recent wet weather pattern, which brought significant snow and rain, in some cases too much at once. This impacted Southern California, but really all of California, with the associated improvement to the drought conditions. The following slides will cover the various impacts from these storms. Here's a look at individual locations across Southern California. Take a look at the location closest to you. There may be a climate site right in your neighborhood. The San Diego airport, despite the very wet start to 2021-22, is right on average. If you look at other locations, you can see they are significantly above average, such as Santa Ana in Orange County and also places like Vista and Escondido in northern San Diego County. However, the areas that received the most of the precipitation to produce a significant head start to the water year include areas such as Big Bear Lake and Palomar Mountain, where they are several inches above average. Unfortunately, though, our deserts still continue to be below average, and this has been going on for the past couple of years. So despite the wet start to the year, not all locations are significantly above average and some locations are just right at average or even below. In some areas, in some cases with heavy rain, it was just too much at once in December. Here's an image of the debris and mud flows that occurred along Wildcat Canyon Road in the Santa Ana Mountains throughout Silverado Canyon off the bonfire scar. There were other areas though, such as Laguna Beach, that saw flash flooding from just too much rain at once, where a couple inches of rain fell in just a short period of time. One of the significance of heavy snow can be the actual water content of the snow, not just the total accumulation. The recent series of storms had a lot of water and with that brought benefit and also impact. The water content, unfortunately, was too heavy in some cases where significant buildup on trees caused damage to the trees themselves, causing them to snap and also to power lines nearby. 38 inches of snow fell from one series of storms at the end of December on Mount Baldy. Now here is a look at some of that impact of too much water content and ice buildup Within and between the storms, there was significant freezing drizzle. That's liquid freezing on contact, so supercooled water droplets. And it's also a form of rime ice that is seen as white accumulation. Here, shown on Palomar Mountain, up to two inches of rime ice accumulation. That can also occur with sub-freezing temperatures when the moisture from the cloud itself, without even having freezing drizzle, accumulates over time. Typically, this occurs between storm cycles. Now, if you were up in the mountains on December 28th or 29th, you would have observed the freezing drizzle, which freezes on contact, such as what's shown on the goggles here, the ice glaze that needs to be scraped off. But you also had a mixture of the frozen form, which is snow needles. And those are more just tiny little flakes that aren't developed. Now, on the right-hand side, you can see you had a little bit of everything. Snow, you had snow that was melting and refreezing. You had rime icing, and you had the freezing drizzle on top, all accumulating on the needles, adding to weight on the trees. So let's take a look at the drought monitor and the change since the start of the water year, October 1st. On the left-hand side is the latest drought monitor, and you can see considerable drought continues across the West, including California. Now on the right-hand side is the improvement, and you can see the recent rainfall or the wet start to the water year has significantly affected and improved conditions across South Central California from the coast all the way through the mountains and into the deserts in the dark green shaded areas. Elsewhere, only slight or no improvement. 
The percent of average precipitation tells the story on the left-hand side how wet the month of December was. In fact, most of central Southern California where the storm track was persistent with several storms and three atmospheric rivers. The percent of average was over 200% or two times as much as what normally would occur in the month of December. Now for the water year on the right hand side, it's not quite as significant. You can still see remnants of the atmospheric river from late October across Northern California. But you do see that most of the Sierra Nevada and parts of Southern California ha that had that dramatic improvement in the drought have been very wet. And for the water year, two to three times as wet compared to average to date. Let's take a look at a couple mountain locations. As mentioned, the mountains did very well, much above average in the month of December, two to three times as much precipitation as average. Take a look at Big Bear Lake, over 10 inches of rain, lands it in fourth place. Of course, some of that fell as snow. Down in Idlewild, a very little of it fell as snow, but still significant and came in fourth place with nine inches of rain for the month of December 2021. And how about an urban location? Santa Ana, long history of data back to 1906. Well, it ended up being in the top 10, six inches of rain for December 2021. Now the drought monitor does consider water supply in addition to precipitation and snowpack. You can see that the reservoirs across California still remain below the historical average or the average that they would be at this time of year specifically reservoirs like Shasta and Lake Oroville. However, it's important to note, Lake Oroville has risen from about 21% of capacity at its minimum, all the way up to 43% of capacity. So significant improvements in the water supply. If you look in Southern California reservoirs, you can see that areas such as the Diamond Valley Lake, our largest reservoir, continue to decrease and now sitting at 74% of capacity. So not at a critical level, but still you can see the drop from the summer through early winter has continued. Now, Big Bear Lake, if you take a look at the level, its lowest level was near 17 feet below the full level, and it's now sitting at about 15 feet below. So we're starting to see some improvement on Big Bear Lake. Now how is the state of California doing with the all-important snowpack or the snow water equivalent? How much snow is sitting in the mountains after the series of storms in December? Well right now we're sitting at over 100% of average so that's great news and averaging around 130% of average. Still a lot of winter to go through January, February, and even into March. So we need to consider that precipitation needs to continue in this region before we start seeing major improvements. Here's another look at the snow water equivalent, and you can see that the rapid rise in snowpack in the month of December, the record-breaking snow that occurred in parts of the Sierra Nevada well, that was on pace with one of the snowiest or wettest years of 82-83 as shown here. So we showed earlier water content of snow and how heavy it was across Southern California. Here's a look at the water which benefits drought and water supply of the actual snow that fell. So this is showing the change of the snow water content in the snowpack over the past 30 days. You can see 15 to as much as 19 inches of water accumulated in that snowpack. Now in Southern California, we also saw significant, as shown in the photos, seven inches of water occurred during the cycle in late December. And right now, currently almost 10 inches of snow water equivalent sitting at 9,500 feet on Mount San Gorgonio. 
So if you were to take all that snow and melt it all at once, you would produce in that pack as if you had 9.8 inches of rain falling at once. Now the precipitation in the Sierra Nevada is shown on this map. So this includes the water and snowfall, so total precipitation. You can see it also was on pace to our wettest year of 2016, 2017. But of course it's tapered off the past 10 days with the lack of precipitation. But nonetheless, 32 inches of precipitation compared to the entire season having an average of 53. So a significant amount of precipitation has already occurred in the bucket. What about the Colorado Basin? That's a very important water supply for Southern California. The precipitation has also been above normal in Colorado. The upper Colorado Basin sitting at about 132% of average so that's good news there but the bad news is the reservoirs are even lower than in california lake mead sitting at 34 percent lake powell 27 percent of capacity in fact lake mead hit an all-time record low this past year so a lot of room for progress in the colorado river basin with many years of drought contributing to these deficits now the question begs why such an active wet weather pattern for California in the month of December? Well, we have been talking about a blocking, unusually warm upper level ridge of high pressure over the past two years in the Pacific. It didn't go anywhere. It shifted further to the west, allowing the storm track to dip across California as shown here from north to south. So all these storms came directly from the north and three of them were able to go far enough south to tap into tropical moisture or atmospheric river activity, leading to, in some cases, a record-breaking precipitation in the month of December. So as the weather pattern changed now that we're in 2022 and January, well, it appears it has, and will this continue? Certainly for much of January, it's expected to. Here's the outlook for mid to late January, below average precipitation most of California and warmer than average temperatures. Notice the shift to the colder temperatures into the Great Lakes region. Now, when we look further out, late January through early February, indications are across California, much of the West, that we're going to see milder and drier than average conditions. That doesn't mean we won't see storms, but what it does mean is that it's too early to tell for this winter if we're going to come out on top with precipitation and significantly improve the drought. The month of November was dry. December was, in some cases, record wet or two to three times as wet as average. But with another half of the winter to go, we still will need at least average precipitation to see significant changes to our drought conditions and our water supply. So at least for now, there's no indications of significant major weather pattern changes occurring through the next couple weeks.